stop buying bad GPUs. Let's get you the best GPU for gaming 2023. Hi, welcome back to PC Builder. I'm Jason. It's finally time to talk about the best GPU for gaming 2023 edition. We have new GPUs launching and good value previous generation GPUs available right now. But I still see too many people buying bad GPUs. We'll cover everything that you need to know to get the best graphics card for gaming in 2023, including GPU features like DLSS versus FSR and ray tracing, how much VRAM your GPU actually needs, AMD versus Nvidia versus Intel GPUs as well, and reviewing the best GPU for 1080p gaming, 1440p gaming, and 4K gaming right now. And we'll tell you also which GPUs to absolutely avoid in 2023. If you get value out of the video, please give it a like because it really helps out the channel. And of course, subscribe and click that bell icon that way you get notified when we release cool content. With that, Let's jump into it. Let's talk about GPU VRAM because new game releases in 2023 have shown that VRAM has actually become more important than FPS. What is VRAM? It's the amount of RAM on your GPU different than the system RAM, and it's not increasable by the end user, except to buy a new GPU with more VRAM. Games like The Last of Us Part 1, Hogwarts Legacy, Forspoken, A Plague Tale Requiem, and others have shown that games releasing right now and in the future are surpassing the eight gigabytes of VRAM that many GPUs, even as recent as the RTX 4060 Ti, have used for years. This occurs even at 1080p, let alone VRAM usage at 1440p and 4K. Games exceeding the GPU VRAM buffer, they either become a stuttering mess or they don't properly load game textures and they look terrible. So an RTX 4060 Ti 8 gigabyte GPU might have a higher average FPS than a 12 gigabyte RX 6700 XT, but this 6700 XT is gonna look amazing, while the 4060 Ti, it's gonna look terrible. And remember, if you wanna turn on some features like ray tracing, for instance, which we'll talk about in a little bit, that's also gonna increase your VRAM usage. So how much VRAM do you need in 2023? Well, for budget 1080p, even 1440p gamers, I still think eight gigabytes can be fine as long as you don't mind turning down textures in new releases or if you don't play the latest AAA title. But if you do wanna be able to play the latest games on release using ultra to high quality textures at 1080p in 2023, I recommend a minimum of 10 gigabytes of VRAM. For 1440p, I'd recommend a minimum of 12 gigabytes of VRAM, but 16 gigabytes should be considered for longer term future proofing. And for 4K gaming, I think you'd be doing yourself a disservice getting less than 16 gigabytes of VRAM right now. So what GPUs on the market right now should you be considering? Well, starting off with the NVIDIA GPUs, we've got the RTX 4000 series, which starts with the RTX 4090 and goes down to the upcoming RTX 4060 and eventually we assume the RTX 4050. NVIDIA RTX 3000 series GPUs are also still available from about the 3070, 3070 Ti down to the 3050 with the higher end models like the RTX 3090 largely sold out and only available on the used market. It wouldn't surprise me to see NVIDIA launch higher VRAM versions of some of its RTX 4000 series GPUs as they have been relatively light on VRAM even up to the $800 price point. For Intel, they released their ARC A750 8 gigabyte and ARC A770 16 gigabyte GPUs. And after recent driver fixes, they become worthy of consideration by gamers. Then we have AMD's Radeon series GPUs, starting with the current RX 7000 series GPUs, including the recently launched RX 7900 XTX, 7900 XT, as well as the budget RX 7600. We do expect more AMD launches in the near future, including the RX 7700 and 7800 series. The RX 6000 series GPUs are still largely available for hugely discounted prices from the RX 6950 XT down the RX 6700 XT and RX 6600. On on the used front, AMD GPUs in the RX 5000 and older RX 500 series, as well as NVIDIA GPUs in the RTX 2000 and 1000 series with at least eight gigabytes of VRAM are largely available under $200 and many of them under $100. Let's also talk about the GPUs that you should absolutely avoid in 2023. Well, AMD and Nvidia still offer cheaper brand new GPUs that have less than eight gigabytes of VRAM, like the RTX 2060 six gigabyte or four gigabyte RX 6500 XT. I would absolutely avoid these in 2023. Just say no to those GTX 1650s, RX 560s, and trash tier GTX 1030s. But what about GPU performance between Nvidia versus AMD? AMD versus Intel GPUs. Well, I'm happy to say that in 2023, all three companies make competitive GPUs for gaming, though Intel obviously is currently limited to the budget gaming segment with their ARC A750 and A770. For enthusiast 1440p and 4K gaming, AMD and Nvidia still have the lead 
with each company offering impressive gaming performance. Though at the time of filming, Nvidia's GPUs often lack the amount of VRAM that AMD offers, and AMD typically prices its GPUs more competitively than Nvidia. It is important to know that some titles simply do a little bit better on AMD or Nvidia GPUs, often because one of those companies sponsors its development. So if you're really into Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, you should absolutely get an AMD GPU as they easily outperform Nvidia at similar price points. Well, a game like Fortnite has shown at least a slight preference for Nvidia GPUs. Then of course, we've got all the extra features. Now, all three GPU companies have upscaling technologies like Nvidia's DLSS, AMD's FSR, and Intel's XESS, which will boost FPS in supported games, and AMD's driver level upscaler called RSR, which works in every game regardless of developer support. Now, while Nvidia's DLSS has a very slight edge in image quality, sometimes even better than native, I find that AMD's FSR upscaler it looks pretty good, and their RSR driver level upscaler is available in every game rather than just developer supported ones, but both FSR and DLSS, they do have a wide range of games that support them. For Intel, while their XESS upscaling looks like it could be a great technology, it is still limited in the number of games that support it, though it does seem to be growing in adoption. Note that Nvidia now offers something called frame generation on its RTX 4000 series GPUs, where the GPU takes two frames and inserts a third AI generated frame in between them. Now, while the gameplay, it might look a little smoother, this actually adds latency and it's not a real frame. Competitive gamers should definitely not use frame generation. Though with weaker hardware, if you mostly play single player titles, it might slightly add to the overall gaming experience. Next, we have ray tracing, which can give images a more lifelike effect of light and reflection modeling, but comes at a significant cost in terms of much lower average FPS, as well as increased VRAM usage. In fact, while an Nvidia GPU like the RTX 4070 Ti 12 gigabyte has a ray tracing edge over the similarly priced RX 7900 XT 20 gigabyte, it isn't clear that 12 gigabyte will be enough for high resolution ray tracing in the future, so that advantage it might be short-lived. It does require at least a higher mid-tier or high-end GPU to get consistently good ray tracing performance. So if this is something that you want, you'll likely be looking at GPUs that cost $600 or more, at least at the time of filming. Currently, NVIDIA 4000 series GPUs perform somewhat better than previous generation RTX 3000 series GPUs at ray tracing, with AMD's RX 7000 series GPUs slightly exceeding the RTX 3000 series in terms of ray tracing, and the RX 6000 series GPUs they perform just okay at ray tracing. When we poll our audience on ray tracing, only about 20% say that ray tracing is important enough to them to give up some FPS, and only 5% say it's worth spending significantly more money on the GPU to get better ray tracing performance. Well, what about streaming and video capture? Well, if you wanna capture your gameplay or stream it to a service like Twitch, I'm happy to report that the video encoding for all three brands is now excellent. Note that if you want AV1 encoding, you'll wanna grab an AMD Radeon RX 7000 series, NVIDIA RTX 4000 series or Intel Arc A750 or A770 GPU. While they do not have AV1 encoding, the RTX 3000 series and RX 6000 series GPUs are also quite good. If you really want to get into streaming, my recommendation is to go up one additional GPU tier for the resolution that you're looking to play at. For those also looking to use video editing or other professional applications, the good news is that at the level of most consumers, there really isn't a big difference between Nvidia versus AMD versus Intel. If you are a professional doing this work 40 hours or more a week, then Nvidia does tend to be better for some professional applications like Adobe Premiere due to better third-party support. But AMD is increasingly competitive and actually is better in other applications like DaVinci Resolve. So professionals should review the specific software that they need to use. Let's talk about Nvidia G-Sync versus AMD FreeSync. Now this is called Variable Refresh Rate or VRR, the technology that prevents screen tearing. And any modern gaming monitor should come equipped with either AMD FreeSync or NVIDIA G-Sync. Note that newer HDMI 2.1 monitors also offer VRR over HDMI 2.1. Now, any of the GPUs we've discussed will work with either technology, though AMD FreeSync, it's by far the most widely available on gaming monitors. If your monitor has HDMI 2.1, then you can use that. Otherwise, I recommend using the DisplayPort cable for maximum compatibility. Intel GPUs, they will work fine with either technology. Let's talk about GPU models and brand names. Does it make any difference if you buy a cheaper version of a GPU like an RTX 4070 Ti 
or should you spend more money on a more expensive version of the RTX 4070 Ti? Well, there are actually differences between GPUs offered by add-in board partners, AIB for short, like Gigabyte, MSI, ASUS, and others. AMD and Nvidia each specify the base specs for every GPU, and that includes the Thermal Design Power, or TDP, which is the wattage of the card. The other thing that's specified is the base and the boost frequencies. Now, AIBs can create models that increase the TDP and or apply a factory overclock to the GPU, as well as design the cooler itself. But the reality is that except for the ultra high-end GPUs, most GPUs perform within 5% of the base models. Buying the cheapest next model up, so in this case an RX 6950 XT instead of a 6800 XT, is always going to give you better performance. So while it's okay to spend a little bit more on a model with better RGB or perhaps quieter fans, don't overspend to the point that you could have bought a higher performance GPU tier. At the higher end of GPUs, we do see more extreme differences with heavily overclocked or water-cooled GPUs, so you can decide if spending a bit extra on an already ultra-high-end GPU makes sense for you. So what's the best gaming GPU 2023? Let's compare FPS performance of NVIDIA versus AMD GPUs and versus Intel as well to get the best price-to-performance GPUs at 1080p, 1440p, and 4K. Links for all the new GPUs are down in the video description so you can check out current pricing and availability as the GPU market is getting cheaper. So how do we come up with the best GPU 2023 for gaming? It's easy, we take the last couple generations of GPUs, AMD, Nvidia, and Intel, we take their used and their new prices, and then we take their performance relative to an RX 570, which will get 1080p kind of low to medium settings. That's the lowest GPU that I would recommend. And remember, all these GPUs have to have at least eight gigs of VRAM to even be listed here. Then we take Take a look at them at 1080p, 1440p, 1440p high refresh rate, and then 4K. This spreadsheet is available down in the video description. You can check it out, as well as we go through this spreadsheet every month and we update it based on the latest pricing and GPU releases. So I'll leave a link to our most recent GPU monthly update down there as well. Starting off with the best GPU under $200, you can see right now largely used GPUs, especially if you want something around about $100. My top recommendations right now are either something like an RX 570, so super cheap, eight gigabyte. Now you can get four gigabyte ones, don't recommend them, pick up an eight gigabyte one, they're same price, $69 right now. If you just wanna build an ultra cheap gaming PC, go for that. However, check out the GeForce GTX 1070 or the 1070 Ti, right around $100, $110, really good value GPUs, and they have eight gigs of VRAM by Nvidia. RX 580, it'd be nice if it came down a little bit. It's hard to recommend at $83, but it's a nice step up if for some reason you can't get to $100 from the RX 570. Then we've got relatively little distance between the GTX 1070 and some new options like the RX 6600, which has fallen down to $179. It is possible in the coming months, we'll see that GPU, especially around Black Friday, go even cheaper. And the Intel Arc A750 now down to about $200, kind of usual US. And again, I expect that GPU to continue to fall down the ladder as well. Great value new GPUs for 1080p gaming. Jumping over to high FPS 1080p gaming. So this is if you want like super high FPS in those competitive titles, you want great FPS in newer titles. These are the GPUs that I would be looking at. There's a score of 180, which is 180% or greater of an RX 570 more than eight gigs of VRAM or eight gigs of VRAM and $350 or less. Now the GPUs on here is a little bit of a mixed bag right now. I expect this is probably gonna continue to shuffle as the year goes on. RX 6600, A750, we already covered those great for budget 1080p gaming. But if you want something that has higher rasterization, 6650 XT and the 7600, my problem with them, eight gigs of VRAM. 7600, super fast card for 269, not terrible value if it had more VRAM on it. It might even be that we see AMD introduce a larger VRAM RAM version of the RX 7600 as we go down the line. But the real winners right here to me, either the RX 6700 for $279 with 10 gigs of VRAM or the XT versions, the RX 6700 and 6750 XT. Those two cards are within 5% of each other in terms of rasterization. So you can just get whichever one's cheaper effectively for about $319, super insane values. If you have to have Nvidia, the RTX 3060, I'd love to see that card come down in price a little bit more, especially as we are expecting the 4060, although only eight gigabytes, again, 
very possible NVIDIA introduces a larger VRAM capacity for the 4060 on down the track. But right now, the 3060, you can have it for 289. I expect that price to continue to come down. We're also waiting right here for like the 7700, 7700 XT and other GPUs by AMD as well. Jumping over to the best 1440p GPU. This is like targeting 144 Hertz refresh rate. And I know I said 12 gigabytes or greater at 1440p in 2023. I'm filtering 10 or greater here just to show you where like the RTX 3080 10 gigabyte comes out. That card's not even two years old right now, but I, I would think it's helpful for folks to get a picture of at least where that one falls in. So right now we've already gone over the 6700 non-XT. Again, great value here, 6700 XT and 6750 XT cards, 12 gigs, $319. Honestly, phenomenal values. If you wanna go up and you wanna look at 16 gigs of VRAM, the RX 6800 XT right now for 500 bucks, great value. Of course, we are waiting for the 7700, like I said, 7700 XT to fall in here. The 4060 Ti is coming with a 16 gigabyte model in July of 2023. It's not out just yet. We'll have to see where that falls in here as well, especially if Nvidia cuts the price because I don't expect it to come out at $500 like they said it would. But then we've got just kind of older generation cards right now, 6950 XT, 6900 XT, but we're spending more and more money. We're getting up to about $600. And you can see in terms of price to performance, AMD just tends to absolutely dominate at 1440p. For those of you looking for a 1440p, 240 hertz refresh rate experience, again, you can't do that in all games, but you can do it in a number of games. And these are the cards that I would be looking at. So a 300 or more graphics score and at least 12 gigs of VRAM. I've just listed the top 10 cards because there are a number of other cards. We'll jump over to 4K in just a moment. 4K cards obviously can do high refresh rate 1440p as well. 6800 XT, 6950 XT, and even the 6900 XT, if you can find one on a good discount, those are really phenomenal values right now. Obviously, we're waiting for the middle of AMD's lineup, RX 7700, 7800, 7800 XT, etc. Interesting to see where NVIDIA's last generation GPUs fall out. If you can find a used RTX 3080 12 gigabyte, not as performative as the 6950, XT, but pretty good. 12 gigs of VRAM, not 16 gigs of VRAM. I think that'll probably get you through 1440p, although I would consider 16 in 2023. And you can pick one up right now for about $553. If you want a new NVIDIA GPU, the RTX 4070, $559 does perform pretty well for the price, but you know, you're stuck with 12 gigs of VRAM. It's possible we'll see a 16 gig VRAM of that, maybe in a future refresh from NVIDIA, like a 4070S or 4070 Super, like we saw with the 2000 series. And then of course we got super high refresh rate, RX 7900 XT and 7900 XTX, but we are now talking about 750 to $1,000 GPUs. Really, really phenomenal in terms of their overall performance though. And to round it out, if you're looking for 4K cards capable of playing at ultra settings, I'm recommending at least 16 gigs of VRAM and we've got a GPU score of 380 or greater. So these are just the highest performance GPUs on the market right now. Again, still waiting for that 7800, 7800 XT, probably her plant, the 6800 XT, but right now that is still a phenomenal value. If you want 4K at ultra, 6950 XT, $600 GPU. If you want something Nvidia, you kind of got to hunt and peck. You really got to go to like an RTX 4080. The 4090 obviously is the best of the best of the best GPU. If you want to spend about 16, $1,500, at least that's the price right now as I'm filming it, that's the GPU to get. If you want to spend about 600 bucks less than that, the 7900 XTX is an absolute monster and it ray traces pretty well. Not quite as well as the 4080, but to me with a 4080, if you can spend $1,100, how come you can't just find another couple hundred bucks and get a 4090? That's what I would do. 7900 XTX makes a lot of sense at $950, as does the 7900 XT if you want super high refresh rate and super high resolution at that $750 price point. Of course, you could go RTX 3090 or 3090 Ti, right now selling used for $750, not bad value. There's a great new way to support the channel. We're launching channel memberships and you can be part of it. You'll get cool emojis that you can use in the video comments, early access to behind the scenes content and exclusive live stream events for members. Click the join button below the video to check out everything and help support the channel. Thank you so much for your support and we'll catch you on the next one.